This week, Bristol's oldest pub has made its entire menu vegan. California bans the sale of fur, and a new vaccine could spare up to 50 million chicks annually. All this and more on Live Kindly's Weekly Vegan News. If you're new to our channel, you can subscribe by hitting the leaf icon in the bottom right corner of the video. Click the bell icon to turn on notifications, and please be sure to like and comment below. Bristol's oldest pub, the Hatchet Inn, now serves a 100% vegan menu. The Hatchet was established 413 years ago in the year 1606. These days, it's known for alternative rock and metal nights and its cozy atmosphere. We stopped doing in-house food earlier this year and instead welcomed our first ever pop-up kitchen called Soy Ahoy. Events manager and bartender Keisha Davies told the Bristol Post. Soy Ahoy specializes in vegan comfort food and pub grub, including tofu skewers, mac and cheese, and burgers. It's already a big success. It hosted its first vegan Sunday roast dinner at The Hatchet on October 6, which sold out. Max Fry, the executive chef and owner of Soy Ahoy, was working as a freelance vegan chef while putting together the framework for his business. He came across an ad for a resident food vendor at The Hatchet. He then met with Drew Short, the general manager. I told him right away that I only intended to serve a plant-based menu, Fry told Liv Kindly. I was just so tired of producing food that didn't match my own ethical beliefs. And to my surprise, Drew thought it was a great idea. Fry says he has been pretty overwhelmed with the response from our lovely customers, and not just from the local vegan community. Bristol is a very open-minded city, and I've some die-hard meat lovers come and try the food, usually dragged along by their vegan friends and family. The Hatchet isn't the only pub embracing a plant-forward menu. This month, international brewery chain BrewDog announced that it would turn its Dalston pub in London into a 100% vegan establishment. Britain now offers an egg-free flu vaccine. The move has been praised as a win for animal welfare and could replace 50 million eggs a year. Vaccine production has included eggs for 70 years. A virus is injected into fertilized chicken eggs, which are then incubated to allow the virus to grow inside them. Fluid is then extracted from the egg to create a vaccine. Roughly four eggs are required to make one vaccine. Britain is the first European country to offer the egg-free vaccine option. Instead of eggs, the vaccine is made using animal cells grown in a laboratory. The cells were taken from a cocker spaniel in 1958, but can divide outside of the animal's body, meaning that an animal is not needed anymore. The vaccine also contains gelatin, a protein obtained by boiling the skin, tendons, or bones of animals. The cell-based vaccine is said to be more effective at fighting off illnesses, as the egg-based process can trigger mutations. Cell culture technology has been used to produce vaccines for polio, smallpox, hepatitis, and chickenpox. The new vaccine will be available to all adults. Coming up, California bans the sale of fur. Coming soon, apparel by Live Kindly. Sign up using the link in the description to get 10% off your first order. Nestle, the world's largest food company, has developed a vegan bacon cheeseburger. The multinational conglomerate enlisted the help of food scientists and top chefs to bring the no-compromise vegan burger to life. According to Nestle, the dairy-free cheddar cheese melts and has the same taste as dairy cheese. The vegan bacon becomes crispy and chewy when cooked just like traditional bacon. The plant-based bacon cheeseburger is significantly lower in fat and saturated fat, and has no cholesterol, tying into the company's goal of reaching zero net greenhouse gas emissions by 2050. According to CEO Mark Schneider, the vegan cheeseburger was created to cater to the growing demand for plant-based food. We're continuing to make good on our promise to offer consumers food that is right for them and right for the planet. The burger will be offered to restaurants and food service outlets starting next year. It's possible McDonald's will be one of the first to stock it. The leading fast food chain has teamed up with Nestle in the past to launch vegan options. McDonald's Germany launched a vegan burger called the Big Vegan TS earlier this year. The item features Nestle's Incredible Burger, a plant-based patty made from soy and wheat protein. It contains 17 grams of protein, the same amount as the meat options at McDonald's. The state of California just banned the sale of fur. 
Governor Gavin Newsom signed the landmark bill into law this week after it passed a Senate floor vote last month. Californians will no longer be able to sell or make clothing, shoes or handbags made of fur, and that begins in 2023. AB 44 was presented by Assemblywoman Laura Friedman last December. The bill prohibits animal fur products from being sold, manufactured, offered for sale, displayed for sale, traded, donated, or distributed in any way in the state. Those who breach the ruling could face civil penalties. Prior to the bill's passage, fur was banned in several California cities, including Los Angeles, San Francisco, and West Hollywood. The fur industry depends on the slaughter of animals like coyotes, foxes, rabbits, mink, and chinchillas, though other animals like dogs, cats, rodents, and raccoons are sometimes used and intentionally mislabeled by manufacturers. Animals are gassed, electrocuted, and beaten for their fur. Fur products are typically treated with chemicals that can be hazardous to human health and the planet formaldehyde, chromium B1, alkyl phenol ethoxylates, azo dyes, and chlorinated phenols are widely used in the fur trade to preserve animal skins. According to ACT Asia, a nonprofit organization that works towards sustainable social change through education. Research from last year found dangerous concentrations of toxic chemicals in fur fashion items purchased from high street stores in China. One item contained chemical concentrations 250 times above the levels permitted by law. Although faux fur is animal free, it can be critiqued for not being sustainable. It's typically made from plastic like virgin polyester or acrylic. Neither of these materials are biodegradable, but designers like Stella McCartney are helping lead the change towards sustainable faux fur. I think that the fashion industry can get away with a lot and it is getting away with murder. Fur is the most unnecessary thing in the world. That those animals aren't eaten. If they try and pretend that the fashion industry animals are a byproduct, which by the way, they are not. They are bred to be killed, to be made into bags. At the Designer Spring 2020 Fashion Show in Paris, model Natalia Vodianova wore a plush black coat made from Coba fur, Vogue Business reports. Coba features 37% plant-based materials, including polyester blended with a corn byproduct. True to McCartney's sustainable ethos, it can be recycled at the end of the fur's life cycle. The Paris-based Faux Fur Institute is also working to bridge the gap between cruelty-free and eco-friendly fashion. The organization developed Smart Fur, a roadmap to making vegan fur more sustainable. It also launched Open Fur, a contest that challenges designers to develop sustainable fur using vegetable-based and synthetic fibers. The Faux Fur Institute is working with several organizations, including sustainable vegan fur artisan Ecopel, which created the Coba fur used by McCartney. According to the company, Coba fur emits 63% fewer greenhouse gases than conventional polyester fur. Coming up, Shark Tank investor Mark Cuban goes vegetarian. Food tech startup Aleph Farms is first to produce lab-grown meat in outer space. Lab meat, also called clean meat and cultured meat, is produced by in vitro cultivation of animal cells. The end result is a product that is biologically identical to real meat. Our mission into space comes at a critical time as we are heading towards a food security crisis. The Israeli clean meat company believes its product could be a solution to the crisis. It set out to prove that clean meat could be grown anywhere, even with limited resources. This is a milestone that demonstrates our capability of producing slaughter-free meat anywhere in the harshest conditions with no dependency on either land or availability of water resources. Aleph Farms used equipment supplied by Russian company 3D Bioprinting Solutions. Didier Tubia, co-founder and CEO of Aleph Farms, said in a statement, In space, we don't have 10,000 or 15,000 liters of water available to produce one kilogram of beef. Clean meat is not yet available to the public, but a growing number of companies are working to bring it to market. Australian company VOW wants to see its lab-grown kangaroo meat in supermarkets by the end of 2022. Integriculture Inc says its slaughter-free foie gras will be available in restaurants by 2021. The Japanese startup aims for its products to be available to the consumer market by 2023. 
Shark Tank investor Mark Cuban is vegetarian now. The reality series featured Deborah and Jonathan Torres, co-founders of Los Angeles-based vegan fried chicken startup Atlas Monroe, on last Sunday's episode. The meat-free chicken, made from wheat protein, was a hit with all the sharks. I went vegetarian three months ago, so this is important to me, and I love products that I can eat. They're obviously smart. According to Deborah, yearly sales were $63,000. Net sales were $70,000, and gross sales were $76,000. This caused some confusion. That doesn't add up. Th that's confusion. I think you got it backwards. Your total sales are... No, our total sales are $60,000. Despite questioning from Grinier, Cuban, and Barbara Corcoran, the Tauruses said they have orders coming in and interest from a mainstream restaurant chain. That was enough for Cuban and guest shark Rohan Oza to offer them a deal. The two offered $1 million for Atlas Monroe, with a 10% royalty for the Tauruses. But, not wanting to give up control of the company, they declined the deal. Everybody in America wants to be where you are right now, and you're gonna walk out of here without a million dollars? The fact that you guys are even offering us a million dollars just lets me know that you guys do understand you're right. what you're we're worth. No, you're right, you're but exactly you right. This isn't the first time vegan businesses have been featured on the show. Vegan honey, vegan dog food, and vegan sushi are just some of the vegan businesses that have entered the tank. British discount supermarket chain Iceland just announced its upcoming vegan Christmas range. The new frozen food line is palm oil free and largely plastic free. Iceland will offer party food like mini meat free cheeseburgers called no bull burger sliders. The supermarket chain's no duck spring rolls feature jackfruit, vegetables, and hoisin sauce. Iceland's tempura vegetable selection offers cooked baby corn, green beans, courgette, and pumpkin pieces in a crispy tempura batter. The no duck Chinese selection comes with sweet plum gyoza, hoisin pastry cones, and Szechuan phyllo crackers. For dessert, Iceland will offer no moo chocolate snowflakes. The snowflake-shaped puddings feature a hard dairy-free chocolate shell and a gooey center. Many of Iceland's Christmas options will be plastic-free this year. The chain revealed plans to completely remove plastic from its own brand products by 2023. We need to work together to, to solve this crisis, which is a crisis for everyone. The Christmas food will also be palm oil free, following on from the supermarket chain's pledge to ditch the ingredient last year. Palm oil production causes deforestation and habitat loss, which threatens orangutan populations. Iceland is the first major supermarket chain in the UK to ban palm oil from own brand products. A new report predicts that the beef industry and the dairy industry could totally collapse by 2030. Rethink X analyzes and forecasts the scope, speed and scale of technology-driven disruption and how this disruption will impact society. In a report titled Rethinking Food and Agriculture 2020 to 2030, the independent think tank lays out how new technologies will cause the beef industry and the dairy industry to fall. Other livestock markets such as fish, chicken, and pig will follow. The report says precision fermentation and a production model called food as software are about to change the food industry as we know it. This production system sees foods engineered by scientists at a molecular level and then uploaded to databases. Food designers around the world, who will work like software developers, can access the databases. Instead of growing a whole cow to break it down into products, food will be built up at the molecular level to precise specifications, says a press release. This will result in a far more distributed, localized food production system that is more stable and resilient than the one it replaces, says the report. The new production system will be shielded from volume and price volatility. This is due to the vagaries of seasonality, weather, drought, disease, and other natural, economic, and political factors. Switching to these foods could have a profound impact on human health and save healthcare systems billions. Rethink X explains that foodborne illnesses and diseases and health conditions like heart disease, obesity, cancer, and diabetes, which studies have all linked with animal products, currently cost the US $1.7 trillion every year. The impact on the environment will also be significant. Currently, animal agriculture is responsible for a multitude of environmental issues. Greenhouse gas emissions are high, as are rates of deforestation. 
the Amazon rainforest fires are linked to cattle ranchers clearing land for beef production. Rethink X predicts that U.S. greenhouse gas emissions from cattle will drop by 60% by 2030. By 2035, they could drop nearly 80%. Modern foods will be up to 100 times more land efficient than animal derived products. They will also be 10 to 25 times more feedstock efficient, 10 times more water efficient, and 20 times more time efficient. That's it for today. What do you think of Nestle's vegan cheeseburger? Let us know in the comments below. Remember to subscribe and hit the notification bell. We'll see you again next week for Live Kindly's weekly vegan news.